Hello, my name is Fadi Saab. I'm a cardiovascular specialist at Metro Health Hospital in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Today, we would like to present to you a case of peripheral vascular disease of critical limb ischemia. This is a 54-year-old gentleman that presented to our facility with complaints of claudication. He was originally placed at Rutherford Class 3. His ABIs at that time were 0.4 on the right lower extremity and 1.0 on the left lower extremity. He didn't have any other significant comorbidities other than hypertension and diabetes. The patient underwent biprosthetic aortic valve replacement five years prior to presentation. He underwent a, a peripheral angiogram that showed evidence of what appears to be a thrombotic lesion involving the popliteal artery with extension of the tibial vessels. At that time, we had a discussion with the patient and we chose to uh, anticoagulate the patient and uh, give him antiplatelet therapy for a period of three months. Unfortunately, over a period of three months, the patient started complaining of progressive uh, peripheral uh, per uh, symptoms uh, up to the point where he's uh, complaining of breast pain involving the right lower extremity. After further discussion with the patient, decision was made to proceed with revascularization of a right lower extremity. What we would like to showcase to you today is the use of aspirational atherectomy in the treatment of what we think is a thrombotic lesion, also crossing the lesion with extravascular ultrasound, evaluation of a lesion with intravascular ultrasound, uh, and, um, and using alternative access, such as pedal access, in this complex case. We hope you enjoy this presentation. Thank you. So for these type of cases, we usually start with integrated access uh, for these patients. Um, what you see here is the access wire being subselective into the deep femoral artery, and that's not unusual for uh, a lot of our integrated access cases. To bypass this problem, we proceed with using an 018 uh, wire. In this case, we're using the V18 wire with a double bend on it, uh, each one at 45 degrees. And under ultrasound guidance, uh, we will redirect it uh, into the superficial femoral artery. Both of the wires are through a 5 French integrated access uh, sheath. In this case, we're using a 2 removal 5 French precision sheath. Once we redirect the wire into the SFA, we can advance the 5 French sheath over the 018, 018 uh, V18 wire. These are the diagnostic images and what you see here is the blood flow in the SFA and the popliteal artery and then you see the subtotal occlusion in the SFA popliteal artery and unfortunately this is the worst case scenario where it involves a trifurcation uh, of the tibial vessels. You see the high takeoff of a posterior tibial artery, TPT trunk into the perineal artery and the anterior tibial artery. Next image shows a reconstitution of flow within the mid to distal uh, posterior tibial artery and mid to distal perineal artery. The anterior tibial artery appears to be subtotally occluded distally. It is for that reason we prefer anti-grade access when we're dealing with popliteal and infrapopliteal disease in cases that requires intervention on the tibial vessels. Pushability and trackability is much more improved with this type of access, especially with complex cases. For crossing this chronic total occlusion, we chose uh, an O35 Navicross catheter. It's made by Turumo. And what you see right here is EVAS extravascular ultrasound essentially guiding us while we're navigating our O35 angled O35 catheter on the ultrasound. And you see the Navicross catheter traveling through the popliteal segment until we reach a patent segment within the TPT trunk and perineal arteries. This is an injection through the Navicross catheter confirming our position within the perineal artery and anterior tibial artery. And you can see with the selective angiography, there is no flow in the posterior tibial artery. The next image that you see here is us navigating under fluoroscopic guidance, the occlusion within the mid perineal artery to the distal perineal artery. We made the decision that we were going to treat the mid to distal perineal artery to relieve the 100% occlusion that we see here. The next step you see here is we're taking a 7 French destination pinnacle 45 centimeter sheath in integrate fashion you see in the left upper corner there and we have decided to deploy an embolic protection system this was a 5 millimeter filter that was deployed in the distal perineal artery the next picture that you see here is an ivus assessment of the perineal artery tpt trunk and popliteal artery and this is an automatic withdrawal of the ivus catheter essentially looking at the plaque appearance and plaque morphology as we were drawing the catheter. This is within the perineal artery. You see this hypoechogenic appearance um, of uh, uh, the plaque that appears to be thrombotic in nature. This is the, the perineal artery joining with the posterior tibial artery. And now we're getting into the popliteal artery, P2, P3 segment of the popliteal artery. And you can see around 11 through, through 7 o'clock the thrombotic 
uh, or hypoechogenic uh, appearance of a plaque suggesting a thrombotic component uh, on, on top of an atherosclerotic process. The image displayed here shows the atherectomy jet stream system 2.4, 3.4 millimeter device. You can see uh, the unique uh, feature of this device with aspirational capabilities plus atherectomy capabilities. The device is currently being activated and you can see the mechanism of action of a device under extravascular ultrasound. Essentially, atherectomy is being performed with the blades uh, of a device in the down position while we're aspirating the, aspirating the thrombotic component of a plaque as we were performing the atherectomy. The device is being advanced slowly uh, for the purposes of this video we might be speeding some of those clips but you ideally would like to advance the device in uh, one to two millimeter bytes um, and take your time with the device also you want to pay attention to the pitch of the device what you see under ultrasound here what we call the wobbling effect um, that signifies that there is some space around uh, the tip of the atherectomy device this is the device being activated with the blades up uh, creating a larger lumen um, uh, impact uh, within the vessel itself and again being advanced uh, through uh, the atherosclerotic process. This is a device being advanced uh, under fluoroscopy. We wanted to show you the mechanism of action of a device under extravascular ultrasound. This is an angiogram post atherectomy without balloon angioplasty and you can clearly see that uh, uh, we removed uh, significant debris with, from the popliteal segment. The next step is we need to proceed with aspirational atherectomy from the perineal artery. At this point we are using the smaller device, the 1.85 millimeter device, but dif the major difference between the above the knee devices and below the knee devices is there is no blades up modality. Um, and it's only uh, one, uh, one size to perform the aspiration. This is the 1.85 millimeter device and we're performing aspirational atherectomy from the mid perineal artery. Um, I cannot overemphasize the importance of integrated access in, in how much easier performing atherectomy becomes. This is a critical stage in the procedure. You can see the flush occlusion of a posterior tibial artery uh, and this image is kind of misleading because that branch that we see in the beginning, that's uh, one of the genicular branches, but not the posterior tibial artery. We have established flow to the perineal artery, but we need to establish flow to the posterior tibial artery without compromising the work that we did here. The answer to this dilemma would be retrograde tibiopedal access. Uh, by accessing the posterior tibial artery in a retrograde fashion, we will preserve the ostium of the posterior tibial artery without compromising the TPT trunk into the perineal artery. After accessing the posterior tibial artery uh, under ultrasound guidance, this is a retrograde angiogram showing a short occlusion between the TPT trunk, popliteal artery, and the posterior tibial artery. We were successful in crossing the ostium of the posterior tibial artery into the popliteal artery. And what you see here is a 7 millimeter snare where we snared our 014 wire in a retrograde fashion and advance the O35 Navicross catheter to the posterior tibial artery. To the view here, we have a sheath inserted in the posterior tibial artery, a 2.9 French sheath made by Cook. Um, and we have uh, our uh, wire uh, that's uh, flossed from the anti-grade axis to the posterior tibial artery. So we have a wire that's secured in the perineal artery. We have a wire that's flossed and secured in the posterior tibial artery and we proceeded with using the 1.85 millimeter device from the popliteal artery into the posterior tibial artery, thus securing the bifurcation between the posterior tibial artery and the TPT trunk. After performing aspirational atherectomy, um, you can clearly see now that we're able to see the posterior tibial artery that's filling via integrate fashion. The next step would be to proceed with performing low pressure balloon angioplasty of the popliteal artery, TPT trunk, and perineal artery, and posterior tibial artery. The advantage of having access within the posterior tibial artery affords the operator the capability of performing retrograde balloon angioplasty. Also having anti-grade 7th inch sheath, you can perform kissing balloon angioplasty of a popliteal artery and posterior tibial artery. This is kissing balloon angioplasty of a popliteal posterior tibial artery. You can see the anti-grade blood flow. Uh, we can see that there is some spasm within the posterior tibial artery. We will proceed with performing low pressure balloon angioplasty within that segment there. A word of caution about undersizing uh, for these vessels. It might come as a surprise to a lot of people that the posterior tibial artery was ballooned with a 4 millimeter vessel and the TPT trunk popliteal artery were ballooned with a 5-6 millimeter balloon. Uh, 
We perform kissing balloon angioplasty um, for the, of the popliteal artery and the posterior tibial artery. Having tibiopetal sheath in the posterior tibial artery here uh, acts as an embolic protection device, thus, allow, uh, thus allowing us to bleed the sheath between balloon inflations to avoid any macro debris to the plantar circulation. After we perform balloon angioplasty, the next step is for us to evaluate flow to the plantar circulation. I want to point your attention that what you see here is uh, with the sheath placed in the posterior tibial artery and you can almost notice the tip of uh, our hemostat uh, holding the flossed wire through the posterior tibial artery. Once we secured our flow through the trifurcation of the popliteal and uh, TPT and posterior tibial artery, we will remove the sheath. Here you can see the cooked tibipetal sheath, a 2.9 front sheath. This is an external compression device called the BOA device. And you can see when you release it, you can see the pulsatile blood flow that's coming out of our axis of the posterior tibial artery. This is the advantage of accessing these vessels within the distal third of the lower extremity. It's a compressible site and there is no concern for compartment syndrome related to access at this level. This angiographic picture shows the blood flow within the posterior tibial artery with the BOA device being applied. And you can see uh, the TIMI1 flow beyond the access point. And a lot of the times, um, uh, once the BOA device is released within a few minutes, even though the ACT levels are normal, you can see adequate normal flow. Finally, we will proceed with the uh, closure of the integrated access site. This is a Vascade uh, closure device. It uses an external plug to uh, perform uh, hemostasis at the access site. What you see here is our access site is essentially at the midpoint of the common thermal head. So it's a compressible site. We were able to uh, compress it and also use an extra vascular closure device to achieve hemostasis. The next slide will show you the 30-day fo arterial duplex follow-up for this patient with the ABI showing normalization of his ABI results and triphasic blood flow through the SFA popliteal and posterior tibial artery. We just finished uh, performing revascularization on the right lower extremity. This was a complex intervention uh, that we ultimately managed uh, successfully to uh, obtain two vessel runoff for this patient um, and uh, treat the popliteal uh, trifurcation into the posterior tibial artery and perineal artery. Uh, we show the anomaly with the high takeoff of a posterior tibial artery. We showcase the use of aspirational atherectomy in large vessels and, uh, and small vessels, and ultimately the use of ultrasound in obtaining retrograde tibial access. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed this demonstration. Thank you.